All right, so today we are going to make a liquid simulation and it's not going to be in the type of fashion that you're used to. We are going to use AI in order to get this done. Now, I know a lot of people are not a great fan of AI because it takes away from the creative process. But to be honest, liquid simulations never were a fun part of the creative process in the first place since we cannot even do something. We simply click on bake. We hope for the best, we wait for hours and afterwards you get a render. Tons of things are wrong with it and you have to keep doing it over and over again. And before you know it, a whole day has passed and you have not got the result that you want. And usually we just give up and then we're like, all right, this liquid simulation is good enough. And today I'm going to show you a new AI workflow that's going to help with liquid simulations. Now, of course, there are a couple of problems like this infinite water generation after it has splashed on it. So it's not like it's perfect or that you're going to get the render you want exactly. But the difference is this only costs three minutes while the baking for a liquid simulation may take up to hours, especially if you are doing a 256 resolution liquid simulation. So this is a workflow that's going to work out great for everybody, especially if you have a bad computer and a lack of time. So I'm going to be using Kling AI. Kling AI has been taking over the AI video generation world by storm and people are often comparing it to Google's VO. Now I've been playing around with this and I think it is capable of some pretty cool results. So right here we get a liquid simulation that looks pretty cool. Of course there's some weird artifacting going on around this area and we have this infinite water generation going on here. But I still think this is a very time efficient solution. So Kling AI, usually you start off with the text to video, but I'm going to image the video. We are on video generation Kling 1.6. 1.6 is free. It's going to prompt you to pay if you use 2.1 and uh, the queues are very long, etc., etc. Kling 1.6 still works out fine. Now, what you do, you create a render, which we've created in a previous tutorial. And then I'm going to this area right here, I will select an image. And this was the image I selected. So it's going to take some time to load in. You don't need to select an end frame. You can do that if you want it to morph into different things and stuff like that. I'm simply going to give it a prompt. Uh, I use the prompt water clashing into product. So let's use that again. And I'm going to generate this. And now it's going to tell you how long it will take. Estimated time, two minutes. All right, so let's have a look. The water's a lot slower now. It's a bit more slow motion. Let's do it again. Let's type in the negative prompt, slow water. Hi Aki Fumujan, I see that you got the ultimate Gobo pack. I hope you're enjoying it. All right, so now the sea is moving in the product. Ah, that looks pretty cool actually. Interesting. So now I'm going to use another prompt. I'm going to say water falling from above on the product. And I will select all of this. Go to deep seek. The Dior Sauvage Clone stands under a luminous full moon. Cascading water droplets collide dynamically with a dark blue surface. Liquid splashes ripple outwards around the bottle's base. Celestial shadows deep in the mystical luxury. The camera remains stationary. So I'm just going to take that and add it to this prompt. I'm going to turn off DeepSeek R1, which is the newest LLM model, just like ChatGPT basically. And I'm going to press on generate. I've never done a liquid simulation that's this easy before. Still looks pretty cool. No water fall falling from the top though. I think it's taking the DeepSeek prompt a bit too seriously. Let's just give it one more shot. Even though we are not getting all the results that we would like to have, I still think there are some pretty cool ones like right here. We've generated this one. That looks pretty cool. We've got this one. That one's this one. That's too slow. Still, it has its vibe. This one also looks pretty cool, I believe. And we have some water moving about, rippling. So in this short amount of time, I've already made one, two, three, four liquid simulations. Let's see, I've got 11 minutes on the clock here. So during the time that I started filming, 11 minutes were what it took to get all of these generations. And now we'll get the next one. So it's 12 minutes for five. If I were to have done this with baking liquid simulations, probably would have taken more than an entire day and you have to use a second machine so you can keep working on the first one. It's just not the best workflow. And I think it's totally fine to have AI remove this terrible process. Okay, we have another one. Oh, there you go. Oh, that looks pretty cool. Whoopa. <laughs> All right, it's even wobbling the product a little bit. I think this looks awesome. And the fact that you can still see through the water, like right here, the Sauvage, it's a pretty cool uh, detail. I think this is nice. Yeah, we get a good one here. You cannot download it without a watermark unless you have a full subscription. It costs like 80 bucks, I believe, a year. Cool, let's try some other ones. So I added this one with the stone environment. Water flashing into the headphones. 
<laughs> it's pretty cool. It's not really bouncing on the product, but it's giving us this effect right here. I think it's nice. So I took this subway image, subway overflowing with water. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Now, as you've seen, doing liquid simulations in this way is a whole lot faster and I also believe a whole lot more fun. I hate liquid simulations in Blender, I'm just going to be honest here. They are very unintuitive, they take a lot of time, they keep your computer busy and it makes weird noises. I don't trust that. Leave a comment on what you think about these advancements with AI and I'll see you in the next video. Click here to watch it.